All right, I've been doing these self-authoring videos and some random other experiments the last couple of months now. I've covered a lot of topics, books, art, acting, sketches, but mostly about myself. Despite all this coverage I've done of myself, I feel bad in a way. I feel like you don't really know me. And in that sense, I don't feel like I've been entirely honest with you guys. I've also wanted to try something different, so I thought I'd dig a little deeper and challenge myself, like really challenge myself. So. I've been working on this story for the past few weeks. This film is about the most embarrassing day of my life. My final showcase in drama school. But first, a brief history. The year was 2012, I just finished art school. I was unemployed with a useless arts degree and a catalog of work that just about no one understood without a lot of explanation about my work. I knew when I finished art school that the life of a visual artist wasn't for me. Although I knew I wanted to do something creative with the rest of my life, I moved back in with my parents and I was desperately trying to figure out what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. Deep down, I knew, I mean, I always knew I wanted to be an actor, but I probably wasn't brave enough to give it a real try. But now, at this life's crossroads, I decided to audition for drama school and I got in. I remember before I started, thinking I was on the cusp of making it big and my natural talent would be recognized in drama school. I was young, cocky, confident and a fearless 23 year old with nothing to lose. I told myself I had two years to make this dream a reality or I'd go back to working in retail or settle for something a little more straight laced. Two years to actually make it happen or I was gonna give up the dream entirely. I did this for a couple of reasons but I knew that a self-imposed deadline would force me to work harder than I'd ever worked before. If I was going to make this happen, I was going to give this dream everything I had. And that's exactly what I did, to my own detriment. I set the bar so high for myself that any bump in the road was crippling to me. I was putting so much pressure on myself to get good. And for the first time in my life, I was suffering from debilitating panic attacks I'd become a really intense actor in the space of two years. All I thought about and spoke about was acting, and glorious it was to be in the moment, but in reality I was rarely present in the other's company, in my own little world, never relaxed and not listening. So after that small detour, let's get on to the actual story. Let's set the scene. It's late May 2015, the showcase is two weeks away, my future will be largely determined by how I performed in a three minute performance piece on stage. In fact, I was really looking forward to the end of year showcase. Here I would shine and my talents would be sought after by the entire Irish industry and I would start the film career I had dreamed of as a child. Or so I now you know how serious I was about the showcase. Let's get back to the actual story. The school prided itself on collaborating with current Irish playwrights. So instead of performing classic works by great playwrights for a showcase, like every other school in Europe, my college had to be different and original. But fortunately, this way of working had a few flaws to it. It was potluck whether or not you'd get a decent part written for you. A lot of the past students I'd spoke to felt as if they'd been misrepresented at the end of year showcase. Even those students that got leading parts felt as if they'd been misrepresented. But it's like, oh yeah, the script doesn't matter. I can make any script work. I had this raw tap talent. Or so I thought. Oh, I'm so deluded. So there were 19 students in our class. The school received six scripts written by six different playwrights. I was cast in the only four-hander. The rest of the class were cast in groups of three. So I draw on the short straw, not ideal, but I wasn't going to let this affect me. I was just going to let this go. The piece was about disconnection in a technological world. Think Black Mirror, but without any real depth to it at all. So written in the stage directions were characters face away from each other, calling out to the audience. I mean, this was an absolute joke. Doing a script where we weren't listening to each other for an end of year showcase piece. I mean, I didn't even understand what the point of performing this thing was. But my future career depended on this script. So I was gonna make it work, no matter what. Our group got some wonderful news on Wednesday night. Our script was pulled from the showcase. We wouldn't be performing it. And this wonderful decision was made by the artistic director of the school. Let's call him Brian for privacy reasons. This was the best news I'd heard all week. I thought, thank God I don't have to perform that crap. Anything's better than that train scene. Yeah, this was pretty stupid on his behalf, seeing as he cast and selected the scene. I guess he didn't read it properly. 
How in God's name does anyone let this happen 32 hours before an end of year showcase? Now you mistake number three. This is a regular occurrence amongst theatre directors to do this kind of thing last minute. And I shouldn't have taken it so personally. So Brian pulls this last minute meeting about 9 o'clock in the evening. And he announced that our group would have to write our own script last minute for Friday. One of the girls in our group was very upset on hearing this news. Understandably so, she paid 10,000 euros in tuition fees and it just boiled down to this nonsense. Of course, Brian's not going to stand for any of this and he narrows in on her. Don't you fucking break down on me, pull yourself together. So I decided that I would try to reason with Brian, seeing as no one else was going to. Sorry there, Brian, I, I was just wondering, could we just have a conversation together as a group before we go ahead and make this decision? There just might be a, a better solution if we put all our heads together. Another word from you won't be in the show at all. So that was the end of that conversation. We were all exhausted from the weeks leading up to the showcase and now my group had to go home and come up with a new idea for Friday morning. Brian contacted a director friend of his to help us with a new script. This guy was literally the most intense director I've ever worked with. Let's call him Sam for privacy reasons. And now bringing him on board last minute just added this other layer of anxiety to the group that we didn't need. He had a concept for an idea he'd been working on. Nobody in the group wanted to do this idea, but with limited time, we had no choice. We also had to write our own dialogue, which was painstakingly difficult as the four of us in the group had completely different ideas of the concept. It proved difficult to construct a cohesive scene using this method, but by Thursday evening, we had a working script. I honestly can't remember what that script was about. I mean, it didn't make any sense. So how am I supposed to remember? But I'll never forget the character, that's for sure. His sister had been murdered for reasons I don't know, or I don't think the director knew, and subsequently, her assailant buried her remains somewhere in the Dublin mountains to hide the evidence, and he was never seen again. Through the grapevine, my character found out about the sister being buried in the Dublin mountains. God knows how he found that out. And in my character's grief, he decided to do his own investigation and retrieve her remains. As you can imagine, I wasn't too keen on this idea, but I was trying to believe in his vision, with difficulty, I might add, as it didn't make any sense in relation to the plot. He wanted my character to be digging furiously during the performance over my dialogue, and Sam was adamant that my character must bring a shovel out on stage, symbolic of his tormented state of mind. Sorry there, Sam. I see where you're going with, with the shovel idea, but look, I'm not too keen on it. You know, I might embarrass myself in front of the Irish industry, you know? Might not be a great idea. Could I just say the lines? No, Fergus, you must bring the shovel out on stage. You're devastated about your sister's death. You must find her. I was so upset and lost that night, I decided to drive back to my family's house. I just couldn't get over the unfairness of this situation. I'd have rather done the train scene than this fucking shovel scene. I couldn't get to sleep either of those nights. I was tossing and turning in my bed. I was just so concerned I was going to embarrass myself on a whole other level. On the morning of the performance, I was on the verge of a mental breakdown. I couldn't believe I was actually going to go out on stage, perform a script that didn't make any sense with a shovel in my hand. I remember feeling as if I was actually going crazy, trying to withdraw into myself so others wouldn't witness my inner turmoil. And I knew, on some level, it was just a showcase and I shouldn't be as devastated as I was. But I just felt so hard done by. And I knew it was pathetic. But when it came time to perform, I channeled that devastation I felt. And it was actually quite fitting for me to be in that state for the character. As I stood in the wings, waiting to go out on stage, my heart about to explode. A full-blown panic attack and I'm hyperventilating now. I was convinced I was going to corpse, but I didn't. I was actually feeling it, and speaking the lines in the right order. I was going to get through this, whilst I dug desperately for my sister's remains. I roared her name at the top of my lungs. Sarah! <laughs> oh, Jesus. Even now, as I VO this, moments of that performance flash through my mind. Ooh, the cringiness of that day still gets to me. And straight after the performance, there were drinks with industry introductions. I was met with sympathetic eyes, congratulating me on this performance, but I knew that my family, friends and colleagues were just being nice. The fact that I knew it was awful didn't concern me too much. I was just glad the performance was over and done with. After the showcase, I sunk into a deep depression. I was so embarrassed about the situation. I mean, I walked out on stage with a shovel in my hand looking for my dead sister's corpse. That would mortify anybody. I'd assumed I'd completely embarrassed myself in front of the entire Irish industry and I thought, 
There was little to no chance I'd ever get work in Dublin again. I mean, who'd want to hire me after that? So with no interest from directors, agents or casting people, obviously, I decided to take my career into my own hands. I shot and edited my own scene and sent it out to acting agencies in Ireland. I figured that the agents would be impressed with my handiwork. And I actually managed to secure a semi-decent agent. Although I didn't get much auditions or jobs in the year to come. So not too bad. I'd secured a semi-decent agent. I didn't ruin my career as far as I know. Everything should have been fine, right? I should have been happy with how things turned out. I survived, but I wasn't happy. Because finishing drama school was such an anti-climax. And none of my expectations for my career were going to happen. And I was just couldn't get over that. I was just so upset that my dreams wouldn't become a reality for another few years at least. And in retrospect, I was so naive into thinking that things would align in the way that I thought they would. And maybe, maybe this was the lesson I needed to learn about growing up, but I couldn't see that at the time. Because I'd failed many times before, but this crushed me. The shame and embarrassment of not reaching my potential on that day, when it truly mattered. This was the first time in my life that I gave something 100%, and I failed miserably. I would go on to tell this story in explicit detail, explaining how I was blocked from opportunity, and this self-induced heaviness I imposed on myself began to ruin opportunity and friendship. And now I began to work harder on my craft than ever before. And as a result, I resented other success. I resented the industry. And I resented that I followed my dream. I only continued to train because I needed something to do with my life. Not because I think I needed it. And it gave me that little bit of hope. I thought, maybe in another institution my talent might be recognised. Because I was determined to make this dream a reality and I didn't care about anything else apart from succeeding. It took me quite some time to reevaluate and realise what I was doing with my life. After a lot of self-inquiry and soul-searching, I started to realise why that day left me so bare. And when I think about that showcase now, I don't think about an embarrassing event or cringe too much. It sometimes makes me laugh at how funny the whole thing was, because it was funny. I mean, I brought a shovel out on stage, but I'd see a missed opportunity. I listen about growing up and making art and failing, none of which I learned that day or the preceding months. Because the most important lesson I should have learned that day was to embrace failure and not to attach my self-worth to it. So here we are, five years later, after I first started on this journey of going for my dream. And I haven't reached the commercial success that I thought I would, but in the interim, I have done so much self-exploration that I wouldn't have done if I didn't follow my dream. That showcase was a real low point for me and it completely destroyed my ego this isn't a success story but that doesn't disappoint me too much because i'm proud of myself i followed my dream as hard as i possibly could for the last five years and i don't think many people can say that i've realized in myself that i'm a very brave person and I don't think I would have known that if I hadn't gone through this process and if I gave up earlier. I don't know what the future holds for me and if I'm being honest, I'm still kind of anxious about it and I worry about will I ever be a success because that's still important to me, you know, to, to, to make a, some sort of success of myself as an artist and an actor. But I know I'll never give up now uh, and I will be an artist and an actor and a creative person for the rest of my life. I think that's a much deeper thing to learn than get the commercial success you want and to learn something more deeper about yourself 
and I hope you want to follow me on this journey. May the story continue.